Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the topic of democracy not being an ideal form of government. Growing up here in the U.S., I was kind of surrounded by this idea that democracy is the ideal form of government, or the best form of government, or kind of the end goal, and also that it's a good way to run organizations or decision-making bodies in general. I've come to really question this idea, and I've seen a number of serious problems with democracy. First though, I want to make clear that I'm not contrasting democracy here with like authoritarian forms of government, so much as I'm trying to push things in a more idealistic direction. I want to ask the question of how can we create decision-making processes that will serve everyone, or at least serve a greater majority of people than a typical majority voting democracy does. I want to start by highlighting a couple problems with democracy. One of the most basic problems is that when you're voting by majority rule, it's always possible for a majority to vote to kind of take away the rights of or exploit or oppress a minority group. One of the reasons that the United States is not built as a strict democracy, but has a whole bunch of checks and balances in it, in involving like legal rights spelled out in the Constitution, is that people, I think, were aware of this problem when the U.S. was founded. So this problem has something that we've been aware of for a long time. But it still can happen, even in the current system. And I think there are a lot of examples of minorities being kind of disenfranchised, not just in the U.S., but kind of all over the world. There's another more subtle problem with democracy, though, that I think can be equally pernicious, and it's something that I see really running rampant in the U.S. right now which is that I think a majority-based voting system tends to lead to polarization. And here's why. If you're working on advancing your political interests in some voting system, you don't have much of an incentive to reach out to the people who are sort of farthest from you, because they're going to be the hardest people to convince to kind of come around to your perspective. The strong incentive is for you to reach out to the people kind of in the middle, so undecided voters, or people who have more moderate views, or people who are unsure of how they feel. I think this is problematic, because what happens is that both sides kind of do this, and they don't end up talking to each other all that much. And the actual issues don't really get hashed out. Like, you have these polarized groups that stay separate for years and years, and they tend to get more polarized. I want to contrast this with a completely different way of thinking, which is a consensus-based decision-making model. I've been involved in some organizations that run on consensus, and it's fascinating how the fact that everyone has to agree in order to make a decision creates a fundamentally different system of incentives. When you're dealing with consensus, if you have a disagreement with someone or some group of people, the incentive is not for you to reach out to those people in the middle, but for you to reach out and talk to the person who has the most strongly opposed view to yours. If you convince the people who don't have particularly strong feelings or who are undecided, that doesn't really get you anywhere, because there's still this person or group of people out there who disagrees with you. If, on the other hand, you meet with the people who have the most different views from yours, and you hash things out, and you talk and talk, and you come up with a solution that satisfies both of you, that is really powerful. And in most cases, all the people who don't have strong feelings will see, oh wow, these two opposing sides agree to this, that must be a great solution, and then you move forward. And that's a really awesome result. And I've found that the, the results that happen from that kind of process tend to be much more positive. They satisfy more people, and they often involve outside-the-box thinking, like pushing things to a new level. So I want to conclude with this idea. Yes, I think democracy is good compared to some forms of government, but it has its problems. And I want us to stop thinking that it's the end goal or the ideal. I want us to start dreaming of better forms of government and better forms of running organizations. Consensus might be a sort of lofty goal. I certainly don't think that we're going to see a large country such as the U.S. run completely by consensus. But I think that it's worth 
entertaining that as a sort of ideal and asking the question of how can we move closer to that goal? How can we change the way our government is structured and how can we change our culture in such a way that we, we move towards a greater portion of people being content or happy with the outcomes of our governmental system? And I think that if we set that as a goal or an ideal, we will ultimately have much better results than if we sort of sit here saying, oh, democracy is the best we can do. Right now, I think a lot of people in the U.S. are pretty frustrated with the current system, and specifically with its polarization. So I, I hope that by sharing all these ideas, I've gotten you to think of other possibilities and start start the wheels turning. Like, I want to brainstorm new ways for us to move forward as a society. So thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this.